Hi, I'm stupid. Hi. My name is Tony. On the grid of Oscars Racing in Melbourne. In front of me in the number 16 card is Leclerc. Yes, Charles Leclerc. Let me tell you the story how I get start alongside him on the front row. We need to start with this restaurant. This is Cafe Cavallino, famous Ferrari restaurant in Melbourne. This restaurant has close relationship with Scuderia Ferrari. On the weekend of Australian Grand Prix, team mechanics, engineers will have dinner at this place. Tuesday before the Grand Prix, they organize go kart race with team mechanics, and I, as a frequent visitor, also get invited to the race. 3 p.m. that afternoon, I received a text message saying Leclerc might be racing with us. My head was buzzing after seeing the message, while super excited but holding my expectations. I even asked which Leclerc because I couldn't believe Charles Leclerc wants to race with peasants like us. Let me introduce you to the track. Oscar's Racing sits just outside Melbourne CBD. It's a rare indoor go-kart track with elevation change. The kart is nearly new salty GT5R. At 6pm, Xiao really turned up at a go-kart track. After briefing, greeting and chat, I found out that Xiao's heard the team is having go-kart race and wants to join himself. What an opportunity. The session has qualifying and the race. We have quite a lot of people, so the quality has been split into three heats. I was in the first split, but I didn't know it was a quality until I finished my heat. But fortunately, I had some clean laps, and with Xiao watching on the side of the track, I was really feeling the pressure. Putting a few good laps in, a faster slap at 28.117, first in our heat. I did over a thousand laps at this track, so I guess it's home race advantage. Xiao was in the second split. He has driven on this track back in 2019. He came here with Pierre. I must commend how friendly and easygoing Xiao's were the entire time. I thought he would be quite busy and in a rush, but he waited patiently for other two heats to finish, and anyone can come up to him and have a chat very easily. Enough shit chat, let's see his laps. As an F1 driver, obviously even on unfamiliar track, he found the rhythm pretty quickly. After 5 laps, he cracked a 28 second barrier, and even in traffic, he did not lose any speed. Just look at this consistency. In the end, of course, he got a pole with 27793. And I get to start alongside him on the front row. No pressure. When the race comes, the venue prepared number 16 for shells, and I got assigned as number 5. I guess we're teammates somewhat. On the grid, I got a little too excited, lined up on the wrong position. We waited quite a long time on the grid, effectively it was co tire start. I had a really good start, even better than Charles. Kept up with him around the first three corner, but as soon as we entered the slow section, my car control with coat tires, it just no match. After the last hairpin, it just pulled away, and I switched my attention to keep it the podium position. But to my surprise, these Italians are really aggressive when go-karting. I got shoved out of the into the wall twice. After that, I threw courtesy out of the window. But the next bit of the race is a little boring to watch from my point of view. I kept pretty good lap times and consistency, catching third place a little bit by bit. After I caught the third place, I was trying to find a chance to overtake, but a small misjudgment from my side here at turn one torpedo guy in front. I am stupid. But then it dawned on me. I should give up on podium. I should let Charles catch up so I could race him a bit more. Next few laps, I shifted my focus to what's behind me. But here comes Charles Leclerc. These two high-speed corners have just enough space for two cars side by side with full fossil. He got past me on the inside at turn one pretty easily. I was too busy wheel to wheel with him. I should have kept the high line at turn one so I could get inside line at turn three. But the next few minutes is probably the most precious time in my life. After Shells pass card 11, he seems in a bit of a rush, wanna go past number 7 too, but number 7 defended pretty well, the Shells didn't make the inside line at here pin here. But here number 11 is a bit cheeky, I am fully alongside with him, he's still trying to squeeze me into the wall, I have to come to steer to push him out of the way. The next lap, let's just watch how Shao tackle this 450 meter go-kart track. Watch how he fully used every meter meter of the track, barely any steering input here, very high speed, just tap the brake at turn 1, throw the car in, turn 3 he touched the wall both at entry and apex. Into the slow section, just little brakes transfer the weight to the front end, but hey, am I catching him? 
Oh dear, I am catching him. Here, Charles launched an attack, trying to get the inside line and hairpin, but uh, nothing, just an incident. Marshall shuns half a second of yellow flag, went green immediately. I'm a lightweight, I have a clear advantage on acceleration. He shot the door at a high speed. T1 inside lines wide open. I almost torpedoed him. Touched the bumper. I could have tried more aggressive and later braking, but uh, I don't want to be on the headline tomorrow for taking out the clear on the go kart session. The race coming to an end, last few laps I watch him drive into the distance. To be honest, I'm running out of stamina here, but also very very emotional of how lucky I am to be wheel to wheel with Charles Leclerc, something you don't even dare to dream about. Here I must send my special thanks to Cafe Cavallino again. Please, if any of you visit Melbourne, you must go visit and taste their very authentic Italian cuisine and feel their passion to Ferrari. This is the scene after Ferrari finished 1-2 in Australian Grand Prix. I gotta have to say, sometimes being a Tifosi is just the most incredible feeling. Thank you for watching, subscribe and like the video.